Hi, welcome to Cik Gurila Channels. In this video, I will explain more about the step of scientific investigations method, about the personal protective equipment, instruments, and also how we can keep a chemicals, how we can handle chemical spills, and etc. You can refer to my previous video if you want to know about the introductions of chemistry, about the definitions about the field in chemistry the industry in chemistry just refer to my previous video next we move to the scientific methods in scientific methods we just use the one that we learned in primary school okay where in scientific methods we start with uh, making an observation and when we make an observation, then we can make an inference. Once we can make an inference, we can come with a problem statement. Then we can make a hypothesis, identifying the variables. Variables is still the same. We have three variables, which is the manipulated variables, responding variables, and also fixed variables. Sometimes we call it as a constant variable. Next, how are we controlling the variables? Planning an experiment, collecting data, and how we analyze and interpreting the data. Lastly, making a conclusion. After we finish with all of this, the most important thing is how we write a report. That is the step of scientific method. Next, we move to the personal protective equipment and some of it might know about PPE. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, we always are usually heard about PPE. The front liners, the doctors, the nurse are wearing PPE. So that is the means of PPE, personal protective equipment. In laboratory, we need to wear personal protective equipment. What is the personal protective equipment? For example, goggles. Goggles prevent dust or chemical splash co from coming into contact with the eyes. Even though you already wear glasses, make sure you need to wear goggles. Because sometimes your glasses is just too small. Okay, but goggles is much bigger to protect your eyes. Next, we have masks. We know that uh, we all need to wear masks whenever we go out. That is to protect us. In the lab, it's still the same. We need to wear masks. Because masks can protect our respiratory organs from chemicals in the form of powder or fume. Sometimes in the lab, we don't even realize there is a vapor, chemical vapor that we can inhale. So that is the most important thing. So why we need to wear masks in the lab? Glove. Glove protects hand from being injured coming into contact with chemical or infection. Lab coat. Lab coat can protect body and clothing from chemical spills. The last one is lab shoes. Lab shoes can protect feet from injuries due to chemical spills, sharp objects or toxic substances. Next, we move to the safety equipment. Safety equipment, we have a fume chamber. We use fume chamber to conduct experiment, especially the one that releases toxic, flammable, or pungent fume. This fume chamber will suck the air from outside, so it prevents from the toxic, flammable, or pungent smell from our chemicals out the suck and then process and let it out okay that's a fume chamber so this is a shower you don't okay in a lab we also have shower why this shower can help to wash and clean the body when an accident occur on the body extinguisher fire on the body 
If there is some fire on the bot on your body during doing an experiment, what you need to do you not you need to run fast to the shower and then get a shower. Don't don't get shy. It's about life. We also have shower and also eye wash. This is to wash and clean eyes when an accident effect the eyes. This is important. Don't let any chemicals be in your eyes in a long time. So when you do an experiment and something might be a vigorous reaction and then a chemical get into your eyes just fast or maybe your friends fastly go bring it to the eye wash wash it okay and then go to the hospital but make sure you or your friends maybe your teacher need to tell the doctors what kind of chemicals that in fact your eyes okay safety equipment we have also another safety equipment i bet everyone knows this this is a fire extinguisher this can extinguish the fire when fire occur in the laboratory not in the lab even not only in laboratory everywhere sometimes we just make it spare in the car in the petrol station in a university in a school we can see the fire extinguisher the main aim is to extinguish the fire next hand soap okay this one is used to remove chemicals oils dirt and microorganism on the hand seems like now whenever we go go back to home wash your hand whenever you go if you're able to wash your hand just wash your hand because that can prevent us from the virus <laughs> that you all know next we move to the storage of chemicals chemicals every single chemicals need to be stored properly and it depends on the properties for example a reactive metals need to store in paraffin oil for example lithium sodium potassium this chemicals like a lithium sodium and potassium these metals are very reactive to water and sometimes even a water vapor they can react with it so we need to store in a paraffin oil next substance with ph less than five or more than nine less than five and more than nine that's mean these chemicals are acidic acidic or alkali so this kind of chemicals we need to store in the car we can this is a corrosive chemicals it's a acidics and alkali sometimes it's less than around three two so it's highly highly acidic or highly basic so we need to store in a special storage cabinet that cap lock and remember the things uh, substance that are corrosive you cannot keep it in a metal container you need to keep it in a plastic or either glass container next we have hydrocarbon and organic solvent hydrocarbons and organic solvents are very volatile volatile and inflammable liquids so we need to store in a shady areas far from the sunlight and heat source okay he source why because these chemicals are volatile volatile means it's easily vaporized if you put at a place that hard a uh, place place that are hot close to the heat source it can easily vaporize next is heavy metals and toxic substances so this is important we need to store in a special label containers and keep in a locked room which is heat free okay next we have substances that decompose easily substance that decompose easily we need to put or store it in a dark bottle for example like acetic acid hydrogen peroxide h2no is a hydrogen h2o2 is a hydrogen peroxide 
silver nitrate okay so we need to put in a dark bottle next we move how can we dispose a chemicals first if we have organic solvent and hydrocarbon so we need to keep in a special containers made of glass or plastic next for a substance with pH less than 5 or more than 9, we need to cap in a closed label containers during disposal. So, every chemicals we need to put in a proper containers before we dispose it. Next, for volatile substances, we need to store in a closed container and keep, keep it away from sun and heat. Next, we have a heavy metal or toxic substance. For this one, we need to cap in plastic bag and the solution be left to evaporate in fume chamber. For example, we have a heavy metals. So we need to evaporate it first, put it into the fume chamber and let it evaporate. And then when it evaporates, it does mean the evap it evaporates the solvent. Next, we can take the heavy metals and then put it into plastic bag, tie it carefully and put it into the container of heavy metal waste in the laboratory we need to have a place for a waste before we bring it to the place to dispose it okay because uh, we, when we need to dispose any chemicals we need to follow the SOP not even the COVID-19 we have a SOP for the chemical substances the waste of chemical substances also need to follow the SOP, Standard Operations Procedure. Next, Hydrogen Proxide. Okay. So, Hydrogen Proxide, if it's in low concentration, so we can dispose it in the sink. But remember, when we don't want to dispose this in a sink, make sure make it in a running water. Open the tap then you can dispose in the sink if it's a high concentration of hydrogen peroxide what you need to do first is you need to dilute it first okay by adding sodium sulfate sulfite and you can dispose in the sink with the same method in the running water and lastly we have a solid waste for solid waste, for example, glass or rubber, we need to put into special containers. So why? Because, for example, a broken glass, so we don't want any injuries can come from that. Next. Okay. Emergency management procedure in the laboratory. So if anything's happen, you need to inform your teacher or the laboratory assistants about the accidents immediately. If anything happen, report it immediately. Don't wait until tomorrow. Next, prohibit other students from entering the accident site. If there is some spill on the floor, don't let the students go near that. Okay? You need to prohibit them. Stop the spill from spreading to other area by using sand to border it. Okay clean the chemical spill and last dispose of the chemical spill by following the correct procedure this one is the step to be taken to moment mercury spill occur if there is a mercury spill occurs the procedure might be a little bit different because mercury it's a dangerous chemical so first, what you need to do, you need to inform the teacher or the laboratory assistants about the accident. And then, make the spill site as a prohibited area. This one. The previous one, we just need to spill to stop the cover area with the sand. But this one, you need to sprinkle sulfur powder to cover up the spill. And then, contact the fire and this rescue department for further action and why mercury are very dangerous sometimes the effect of mercury poisoning is not now it's maybe few years or maybe 
when you're old, it can affect you. Okay, but this is the symptom of mercury poisoning if you expose too much with it. For example, we can might get a nausea, coughing, vomiting, diarrhea, chest pain, chest pain, sore throats, difficulty in breathing, headache, eye irritation, vision problems, or might be we can get an increase in blood pressure. Okay, thank you for listening and remember to like and subscribe my video. See you in my next videos. Okay, bye.